the voters of Broward County voted to tax themselves for improvements to their schools across the district. Florida Tax Watch monitors the progress of the SMART program each quarter, and here's the latest Florida Tax Watch report. The SMART program is an acronym for safety, music and arts, athletics, renovations, and technology. The technology spend portion of the SMART program is complete. Uh, the district purchased uh, I think more than 90,000 uh, computers, tablets, laptops, desktops, and things like that. Uh, the music uh, spend portion is completed. The district has purchased more than 60,000 uh, pieces of uh, musical equipment. Uh, they've purchased more than 135 kilns. The schools that have theater programs, uh, there's been funds set aside to upgrade those programs, and those are completed as well. Uh, weight room projects are completed, track uh, resourcing projects are completed. There are currently 281 primary renovations projects that are part of the SMART program. Of that total, 50 have either been completed or are in the construction closeout phase, which means they're, they're close to being completed. Uh, it's important to note that 242 of those uh, have gone beyond the design phase. And if, if, the, if you have looked at any of our earlier reports, you'll know that uh, the design phase is where a lot of the, the delays have occurred. So uh, we're optimistic that with so many of these projects now past the design phase, uh, that they'll, they'll got a much better chance of being completed on schedule. What we have found is that it's taking an average of about 70 days from the time uh, a project is approved to when the notice to proceed is issued. Change orders, much longer. It's average about 190, 192 days to get change orders approved. Um, and if the district is serious about keeping the, the 2020 schedule, uh, there's going to have to be some improvements in some of the processes. Uh, one of the things that the Bond Oversight Committee has recommended is that the school board delegate authority for approval of change orders. Um, they were not receptive to a $25,000 threshold, uh, but there is some optimism that they might consider a lower threshold, like $15,000 or $10,000. Even that, when you look at the, uh, the number of change orders uh, that are below that threshold, that's, that's a good bit of the change order. So we're optimistic that delegating that authority could help speed up change orders. This quarter, the last quarter, um, the district approved 77 change orders. Usually change orders are the result of unforeseen circumstances. However, of the 77 change orders, 42 of those were due to either uh, an error or an omission by the consultant. Uh, and that cost the district an additional $715,000. The last quarter reflects an increase of about $31 million. The budget increased from about $1.38 billion to $1.415 billion. Um, and those are uh, the results of the change orders and the additional monies that needed to be appropriated to uh, address the, the projects that have been flagged for budget delays. One of the concerns we had is whether there were sufficient funds to get to the end of the program and TaxWatch recommended that the district calculate the lifespan of the remaining monies to see if there was enough to, to bring this program in for a landing. The district's been spending about $17.5 million a month for the last couple of years, and if they continue at that spend rate, uh, the money will probably run out in early calendar year 2025. And again, that's significant because the planned renovations are scheduled to go through the end of calendar year 2025. The financial risk is, is essentially the, the additional amount of money over the original budget, which was $987 million. 
Uh, every quarter, uh, the district's consultants put together an assessment of financial risk, and they look at inflation and labor costs and a number of other factors to see how the program costs might increase. The current um, Financial risk vacillates between uh, just over $500 million on the low end and just over $600 million in the, in the high end. Uh, the district has set aside $558 million in reserve to cover these overruns. Uh, but again, if, if the financial risk is closer to $600 million, then there's a possibility that the district will have to put even more money into the reserve fund. One of the things that the Bond Oversight Committee uh, was insistent upon was that the district recover these monies from consultants, these additional monies that had to be put into projects. Uh, and the district has recovered, I want to say 730 or so thousand dollars um, that was due to um, some act or omission on the part of the consultants. The district set a goal of awarding 30% of all the SMART program contracts to minority-owned businesses. Uh, they're currently trending at about 31%. So in terms of their overall goal, they're where they want to be. Uh, the Bond Oversight Committee has identified the need to uh, make extra efforts to bring uh, African-American and women-owned businesses into the fold. And there are some signs that that's been successful. One thing the Bond Oversight Committee has been pushing the district on for some time is ramping up its communications efforts to make sure the public was aware that there's a new schedule in place uh, and, and to better manage the expectations of, of the Broward taxpayers. 